the strategy we have. And what do we need in your opinion for mass adoption? A massive adoption, I mean, uh, there's, there's a few things you can do with massive adop adoption. The first is Bitcoin, right? Mm. If you ask uh, people outside the crypto industry about what is crypto, and the first answer they will give you is Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin can definitely do massive adoption. And when there's, you know, BlackRock or other big asset management companies mm -hmm. have the ETF, you know, approve, which I think may get approved, mm -hmm. and this will help actually the uh, crypto industry do, do matter adoption because people can invest into ETF directly mm -hmm. uh, and the, the underlying assets of Bitcoin, right? So this is actually a good way for, for more people to invest in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. potentially invest into, into, you know, crypto industry. I mean, there could be a certain ETF after Bitcoin, but we never know. But mm -hmm. there could be a certain ETF for a few years later. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's one thing. The other thing is about NFT. NFT, of course, in the last bond market, uh, if you expand the difference between layer one protocol to people outside the crypto industry, it's actually a very difficult job for you to do that because yeah. people never understand about it. Mm -hmm. What is the best way for them to understand about it besides Bitcoin? It's an NFT. You mm -hmm. tell them, okay, this is an NFT you can own and they can visualize it. They can use that as their selfie mm -hmm. or, or whatever that is. And then people want to say, okay, okay, so I know crypto more about NFT. Mm -hmm. It's cause it's just easily to do adoption for, for people outside the crypto industry. Mm -hmm. And NFT, the problem for NFT right now, uh, I think there are two problems. The first is like it's, you know, this kind of 10K PFP, really hard to scale, cause you will have probably 5,000 or 6,000 owner of the PFP. Mm -hmm. Then you cannot scale it, right? there's only 5,000 people only this PFP. Mm -hmm. It's not related to other people. So with we need massive adoption, we need more utility for NFT. We need people, more people to earn about NFT. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be 10K PFP. It should be NFT fit into some game five project, fit into metaverse, fit into whatever that is. Mm -hmm. More people, or, or like other potential application we don't know, but more people earning NFT. So that's actually creating the utility is also one important problem mm -hmm. for the NFT. The second problem for the NFT by nature is liquidity, mm -hmm. right? It's, non, it's a non-fungible token. It's not fungible token like Bitcoin you can sell on a secondary market. Mm -hmm. So the liquidity must be, I mean, slightly worse than, than, than these kind of fungible tokens. Mm -hmm. So you can never easily trade about that. But this is still better than other, you know, stuff like a, 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 a bag or a watch, whatever, mm -hmm. right? You can still have trading on OpenSea, which is slightly better. I guess, you know, to, you know, so because of liquidity issues in a bear market, I mean, NFT will be, uh, the market will be worse than it looks, just like right now, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people are lacking of liquidity. Why should we hold an NFT with no liquidity? Mm -hmm. It's very dangerous. We're just holding Bitcoin with good liquidity, mm -hmm. right? But in a bond market, it would be a totally different story because liquidity is, is enough. It's not a, a hurdle mm -hmm. for us to to, uh, to consider. Then, you know, people are willing to hold in this kind of NFT project, mm -hmm. right? So I guess, you know, the NFT project usually will become very popular uh, at during the time of the bond market. So bear market, it's much safer to earn Bitcoin easy. Mm -hmm. So these are actually the two problems of NFT. Mm -hmm. So once we have the next bar run, I'm pretty sure the NFT market will come back. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily to be the same project as the last bar market, mm -hmm. but NFT market is going to be massive as well. And uh, I've seen you have Bored Ape Yacht uh, uh -huh. Club NFT, and now like as you mentioned, all these NFTs are traded at very low price. Even like there was just the news about uh, Jack Dorsey Street where which uh -huh. was sold as NFT for uh, two million dollars. Now like it's valued just at four dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, then like uh, Justin Bieber's NFT with Bored Ape Yacht Club, which mm -hmm. was like at one point two or one point three million dollars, is now around sixty thousand dollars. So, in your opinion, is it bold move now to invest into like popular NFTs like Bored Ape Yacht Club or CryptoPunks? So, do you think it's maybe a quite a good investment to invest at low price during the bear market? Yeah, yes, I think so. Uh, but I guess you know if you're spending a couple of million dollars into NFT, that's probably too expensive, right? <laughs> <laughs> to to to. I mean, people are crazy at that time, so I guess you know. But this is over definitely overvalued. A Bored Ape, you know, did 
then it was like a couple million dollars. That's that's mm-hmm. not going to happen. Um, you know, that's going to not you know it's not it's not worth it, right? But right now, I think um, NFT. You know, I own a bot ape. You know, what time did you get it? Oh, uh, just recently, like uh, uh, probably two months ago. Ah, I, I so buy. you bought the deep. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's a deep, right? So, <laughs> but I it, it there's no financial advice, but I guess you know right now the NFT market is somehow undervalued. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I will also invest in a project called Peggy Penguins. Mm-hmm. I really love the version of the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luca and his founding team doing pretty well into creative vision because they feel like body is. Um, you know, it, it you know, this, the, all, all these kind of things are more uh, f- in the favor of the probably elder age, like 30 years or 40 years old people. Mm-hmm. What about 20s? They may be in favor of the Peggy Penguins. Mm-hmm. And also, Peggy Penguins is very good at, you know, uh, doing adoption in the Asian market as well. Because mm-hmm. not, not every Asian people love a love the style of Bo Ape. Mm-hmm. So I mean I mean this te- this team also have a very good vision about about creating a good NFT project. So I like that. So I also invest into them as well. And how do you see the differences in crypto adoption in different markets? Like you're based in Asia, mm-hmm. how do you see the adoption here in Europe or Middle East or US? Where do you see the most innovation and as well where do you see the most people are keen to invest into crypto or NFT or gaming? Cool. So I guess, you know, uh, mm, uh, I think the policy in a lot of countries for crypto are very positive. That actually, actually created, open the door for, for people to invest, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, especially in Asia countries like, the, you know, uh, UAE, in Dubai, and Singapore, uh, maybe Hong Kong, mm-hmm. and Japan as well right now. Uh, in Europe, there will be another protocol and France as well. There's a lot of countries being very open-minded to crypto industry, which is super, super good for, for, mm-hmm. for people to kind of uh, have access to buying crypto, right? This, this is very important, very good. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the jurisdiction perspective, I think Asia people love playing video games. Mm-hmm. You know, if you check what they do after they work, they play <laughs> video games, right? <laughs> so I guess game... Do you fr- play video games yourself? I, I, I don't play a lot of video games because I, you know, I have, there are a lot of work I have to do, but I, I guess a lot of people are playing that, right? Or you just check potential investments like the interface and so on? Yeah, I have our team playing that. Oh, I play, okay, if yeah. I invest, I would play for a while, but after mm-hmm. that, I, I didn't play. I don't, just don't have the time to play these kind of games. But I guess, you know, there are a lot of people are big fans of video games. Mm-hmm. And and and, and uh, you know, you know, Tencent is actually the largest video game in, in uh, video game companies, right, in the world, and they are based in China. So I guess you know people are crazy about playing video games. So this is really something I guess, you know, Asian people could potentially you know build and target. You know, mm-hmm. they they play, uh, they create video games, and people are playing it, mm-hmm. right? But game fan need to find, need to have more new business model because the previous play to um, model didn't work very well mm-hmm. so you know it, it works well in the beginning you can track people to play in the video game because mm-hmm. you give the token as reward but after that how can they create the values it's a problem right all the people are trying to grab value from the project instead of giving value to the project mm-hmm. so this is actually the problem so uh, and also uh, our scalability issue you know still exists you know we cannot support in uh, triple A game, putting everything on can is just mm-hmm. really not realistic. So I think, but but for game five, we need to find more new business model and maybe put part of the game on chain, and the, uh, and the, you know, uh, combine with NFT and and find a new business model other than play to earn and uh, letting people play this kind of game like uh, what you're using, you know, in, in, in the crypto space. Mm-hmm. So this is actually probably the new potential narrative, but we never know about what it exactly looks like mm-hmm. in the next world. Right? So. And how do you see as well developments in China where you originally from? Like they were totally against uh, crypto and now they're like, but they adopted somehow blockchain technology and now they as well released uh, their white paper that uh, they are uh, keen to explore as well Web3, so how do you see the development in, in China and as well considering that Hong Kong now becomes another hub in Asia for crypto, where even HCBC 
uh, is now uh, uh, can now open bank accounts for crypto companies and we see as well a lot of other companies moving there. So what, what do you see in those regions? Yeah, I think uh, overall speaking, they've been more friendly, especially the policy in Hong Kong recently actually a very good signal for crypto because, you know, um, you know, still, I mean, compared to uh, traditional market, crypto market is still very small, right? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of small funds compared to traditional market, you know, invest in the crypto industry mm -hmm. like us. Uh, but, you know, once you open the door for letting more mainstream capital, you know, moving to the crypto space and invest, just like what, what Hong Kong does, there will be tons of money moving into the space mm -hmm. and be potentially become LPs of this fund or invest direct, directly into the crypto or mm -hmm. buying Bitcoin and ETH or whatever. That's actually give a massive uh, support for the crypto industry. So I think since, you know, we have become more open-minded and uh, are more open, but we just never know uh, how fast it will be. And you mentioned before as well institutional uh, investments into crypto and as well applications for like spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, so how do you see the current state of uh, institutional investments into crypto? And uh, do you think it may in future take power from the retail that all these big players come and uh, play crypto and will just manipulate uh, the markets how they want? So it will take power of uh, the ordinary people who invest into crypto as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it just, you know, their movement uh, like uh, depends on, on, on the policy a lot, right? So mm -hmm. with uh, regulation clarity about crypto industry, uh, especially all these tokens are security and not security, mm -hmm. and also the ETF stuff, then, you know, we can see more massive adoption about inv uh, institutional investors to invest in this space. For the last four market, you know, there's a, a, a few kind of like a, earlier kind of institutional investment like mm -hmm. ARK Capital, like uh, maybe Tesla as well. Mm -hmm. they, they invest in the crypto space, but then it's actually just a small bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Once the regulation clearly become, you know, become, you know, uh, everyone everyone knows what, what's the nec next things will happen mm -hmm. and they give more clarity, then we will see a lot of institutional investment in the space. ETF is just one very important tool. Just imagine, you know, gold trading market is also very chaotic before mm -hmm. Uh, gold have an ETF, right? Mm -hmm. So once ETF have, then gold have a really long bull market. So it's actually important tool for people to invest, especially for the institutional, uh, for, for to invest in crypto by by any ETF. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the second part of the question: Do you think it's a good thing that institutional investors will come in, or is it bad that they will take power and will just uh, manipulate the markets with uh, like is that? amount of assets they have under management to invest into crypto? Yeah, I, I think still a good thing. So I, I don't think, y you know, uh, we can never stop institutional to come in, into the space if regulation is clear, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess, and the other thing is they are bringing capital to invest in the space. So overall speaking, it's, it's just a, it's absolutely a good thing for the crypto industry because mm -hmm. eventually we need to embrace the mainstream, you know, financial industry, right? Uh, but, you know, you, you speak of manipulations, I mean, that's happened everywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> so even in the stock market, whatever, they, these mm -hmm. kind of bad things always happen. So we cannot just like, a, uh, because of this small kind of issues, we cannot prevent the big kind of things from happening. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's more like, a, I would say it's more positive than negative from my perspective. And you as well uh, told that 80% of your funds mm. you invest into Bitcoin and Ethereum and 20% is for venture investing mm. and uh, like you started with uh, your own money, uh, both of your funds and you grew uh, DFG to $1 billion. So can you tell about the challenges on the way of growing it and like uh, maybe there were some uh, failed investments you can share? Sure, absolutely. Good question. So. I guess our strategy, cause we, we, we don't have LPs, we don't have, you know, people kind of giving us the money. So our strategy is more uh, conservative and we need a lot of liquidity. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, uh, you know, if I allocate all my money to the permanent market and I have zero liquidity, that's a, that's a problem, right? So actually being more conservative and I fully believe in the vision of Bitcoin and Ether, we still dominate the market. Mm -hmm. So we just put in most of our asset there. And for others, I mean, it's also good for us to support in new innovation and new founders. So we allocate probably around like 20% 20, 20 of our capital into private market into different good founders and projects. So that's, that's why we have this strategy. And for the, for the challenges we have, you know, I mean, 
there's a lot of challenges. I mean, one clear challenge we have is uh, we invest into more than 100 different projects, mm -hmm. so it's very hard to manage them. You, you, you know, there's so many, so many things happen in the industry, and we have a hundred projects. How could we manage them? We cannot put in all the resources to to equal it to this project. Mm -hmm. So we need to select the important one, give them the more resources, and spend a lot of time with them. So it's really hard to manage these a hundred projects we invest, mm -hmm. and uh, we just don't want, you know, the good ones to fail. So this is clearly one challenge we try to solve, and by you know recruiting better people in our team to help them, mm -hmm. you know, by different ways to help them. And the other challenges we have is about, because um, uh, last year is really tough for everybody in the crypto space. We, we, we also criticize the Genesis. So there's a lot of things we, we've been cautious to, because, you know, you never know once you, 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 you offer a centralized uh, custody for people, but you don't have a license, you never know what they, what's going on. So we'll be more cautious about and if identify which centralized party we should trust, which are not, right? This is also, a, 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 you know, a kind of a, a potential challenge for us recently, yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you share as well the, your future plans for investing and what brands currently do you see and what will be the catalyst of the next bull market? Yes, yeah, thanks. Uh, I guess our investment strategy right now is, um, are we are being cautious of all. I mean, the speed we invest is probably one or two deal in a month. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not very frequent <laughs> compared to the bond market, because mm -hmm. we think you know we can slow down and do more due diligence and really analyze the project in deeply and uh, then writing our checks to the to the project. So this is our strategy, and the other is really about you know whether we can find a new innovation. And uh, this is actually, you know, important to us, whether it's infrastructure or applications. So these are actually the things we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been really think deeply into. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and your experience with us. Thank you for the great interview. Thank you for having me, and thanks everyone. <laughs>